Hey guys, in this video we're going to show you how to tile a shower wall, specifically the plumbing wall using 4 by 12 inch subway tiles. Now in our prior videos we showed you how to tile the main shower wall and also tips on how to tile the bench wall. Today we're going to be tiling up to the bottom of the shower niche and in our next video we're going to show you some tips on how we tiled that niche using pencil trim in the same subway tile. So let's dive into today's video. So to determine the, uh, the width of these tile, our bull nose is just going to go right to the straight to the edge of our, our sill here. So that'll be pretty easy to line up with. And as you can see, I have a little bit of dry work I got to do. This is basically the idea of having the backer board setting back a little bit so that I can try to have my tile overlap the drywall slightly. And that helps me from not having to finish when I don't do that. As you can see here, Steve is getting the center mark on the plumbing wall. So he's checking from both sides to make sure that that is correct. And then adding it on the weedy board there with the pencil. And so what we're doing here is cutting a little four inch piece to fit in the corner and also checking the height as it relates to the laser level. So we actually had to scribe cut that little four inch corner piece to meet up square with the main wall. And we're applying our Artex X77 with directional troweling and adding that small little four inch piece and cleaning it off and adding a spacer below it so there's expansion and contraction between it and the shower pan and the adjacent wall. So again, we're using the CGX115 Diamond Blade by Montelit to scribe cut these tiles and make sure that they line up with the laser level. The other thing they want to do is back butter all of these subway tiles. We're shooting for 95 to 100% coverage behind that tile. And so we're just continuing to do this for the first row. And we are using the Tuscan seam clips here. You don't have to use those. That's the leveling system that we're using. For this little L cut, again, we're using the diamond blade to cut that. And we're leaving a little bit of a gap between that L cut out and the quartz curb. Uh, you definitely want an expansion and contraction joint there as well. This was a little bit tricky. We managed to pull it off. And always clean off any thin set that's above the tile, especially with these subway tiles. You can see here, it's a nice tight fit. So we've decided to put this little piece of like crown molding just to cap the top. Uh, give it a little bit more flair at the top, give it a little bit more decorative look. What I want to try to do with my bull nose is to match this piece on my other side of the shower. I want my bull knows to basically line up and look the same. So since while I'm here, I'm just going to measure from top of my tile to my full piece of bull nose. So 69 inches to my closest full tile here. So 69 inches that full tile, and then I'll be able to take a bull nose piece and determine where I am from here. So I'm going to start out with a three and or yeah three and three eighths piece, and I will make my bull nose line up up there. So again, we're applying our thin set mortar to the wall and to the back of the bull nose. Even the bull nose, we want to have 95 to 100 percent coverage. And those little those little uh, horseshoe shims definitely come in handy when you're using the subway tile and the bull nose there, as you'll see here in a moment. So again, the second row is very important as well for a subway tile layout. You want it to be lined up as as close as you can so that you're you're stacking them. So Steve is checking here that it's equal on both sides and that our alignment is good before we set the second row of tile. So always just double check that that second tile is halfway in between the, uh, the grout joint of the first row there in the center. So here we are, we're setting that second tile. It's more of a full tile uh, that's going to be adjacent to that sub, that bullnose tile that's going to be the border there. And again, our horseshoe shims come in handy between the subway tile and the bullnose as we're stacking them up the wall. The other tool that comes in handy here, as you can see, is a laser level. We're just using a Bosch laser level. You always want to scrape that thin set mortar out when it oozes between the bull nose and the drywall. You don't want to leave any residue, thin set residue on the drywall. So here's our last tile of that second row. And you'll see here that Steve is going to use his little carpet knife 
to create a gap there. You always wanna leave a little bit of a gap in the corner for expansion and contraction, and we're gonna fill that in with silicone later on. On this deal here, I'm just gonna measure over uh, to my center mark, so we're about six and seven eighths. We applied the painter's tape to the top of the tile because it helps prevent the tile from chipping when you cut it. That's the middle there. We basically have a four and a half inch deal. Let's measure up five eighths inch. Four and five eighths, two and uh, five sixteenths. Two and a half, sorry, it's two and a half. This is a funny story. That painter's tape roll was sitting there and it looked to match with our mixing valve seal. So we use that kind of to help out with the template. All right, so it kind of gives me a reference. I'm gonna be making it a little bit bigger than that. Yeah, about a quarter inch bigger than that all the way around. We used the CGX 115 diamond blade again to make this semi-circle cut into the subway tile. We like this blade a lot because every single time you use it, Due to the diamonds and how they're arranged on the blade, it actually gets better over time, unlike other blades. If you are interested in that CGX-115 diamond blade, which is awesome, you can click right here to check it out. That'll take you back over to Home Repair Tutor where we did a tutorial on it. So we continue our semi-circle cut and what we do is we actually flip over the tile and you can see there, there are cuts in it. We continue the cutting on the other side. Just a little tip there actually makes things a little bit easier. Um, always be safe when you use these tools though. So we dry fit it, ensure that it fits on the wall, back butter it with our thin set mortar, and then set it in place. We actually did use the seam clips on this as well and ensured that the mixing valve trim covered it. Now we had to cut off a little sliver of the corner of the next subway tile above the mixing valve. Again, setting it in place and using horseshoe shims to, to keep our grout joint and then outlining or tracing on top of that painter's tape the other semi cut that we had to make into the, into the tile. Now in the next video, we are gonna show you some tips on how to tile the niche in this subway shower. So make sure you stay tuned for that. If you are remodeling a bathroom, click right here to get our free guide. It's awesome. There are a ton of great tips in there. It'll also help you avoid some bad mistakes. Thanks for watching today's video. If you have any questions, please let us know. We'd be more than happy to help you out. All right, we'll see you soon. Take care.